Some might say you procrastinate. Possibly. You're afraid that it just won't get done, so you put it off. Or possibly there are too many interruptions and you just keep putting it off. So what can you do? Set something up? I don't even have to think about it? Interesting. Ah, a bit like walking in the park. You don't think about it, you just walk. Or maybe the task just seems to morph, to get bigger, bigger, or it changes. As a result, it never gets done. Again, what can you do? If you ask yourself why it morphs, could be a number of reasons, but maybe the most common one is you haven't thought about it much before you even started. If you had, all those things that make it morph, you would have taken into account. So you think about it, you do a plan and you follow through. You don't have to think too much once you're following through. Trouble is, <clears throat> we often let tools interfere with our thinking. We immediately realize a solution without thinking about it, enter the information into some tool and just let that do the work for us. We haven't done the thinking beforehand. Or, I got into it. Then it was a pointless task, so it never got done. It's been a waste of time. If you think about it beforehand, there doesn't seem to be a point to the task, scratch it. Don't spend any more time on it. You won't know this unless you think about it beforehand. So, how do we get it done? How we get it done? Before we start onto this, I'd like you to close your eyes. Give yourself a minute or two to relax. Become quite drowsy. It'll make you far more focused as we go through how we get it done. Feel your body becoming lighter. Every breath you take. Until you get the feeling that you're floating in a warm bath or in a swimming pool where the temperature is just right. Now you felt constrained or blocked by your problems getting things done up to date. What we want to do now is imagine that closed room and the door to it. Now, and you're going to get that key to that door and then step out. You're going to get past the fence that blocks you in, in terms of getting things done. As you're floating in that pool now, we'll go through the first step in creating that key, that way out. Now, you need to write down, think about, visualise the aim what it is that you really want to get done. Think about things until the light bulb goes off. For example, you might have said, a reporting system needs to be operational. And you may have missed without thinking about it, that it's for client interaction and the date. 
as you think more and more about this, so you will come to a proper statement of the aim, which will enable you to get things done. Step two, and if you haven't got step one right, then you're going to fail in step two. Having expressed your aim for getting it done, what we will do now is think about what those things are that will help you to either achieve or not achieve your aim. So what is it that might stop you? And what is it that might help you to achieving your aim of getting it done? One trick to this is to take a piece of paper, split it into two columns, left and right. Everything you can think about that might stop or help you to get it done, according to the aim, right down in the left hand side. On the right hand side then, as a result of what you've written on the left hand side and asked the question on it, so what does that mean, write down your answer to, so what does that mean. In terms of achieving getting what you done, what you need done, in an autonomous manner, you need a plan. And this is where we start to get into the plan. Left hand column. Things will stop or help you getting something done. Write them down. Ask yourself the question, what does that mean? So what? In relation to what you've written down in the left hand side. Then you'll get some answers in the right hand column in answer to your question, so what? Which then leads to part of a plan for getting things done. Step three, writing down the list of things that you need to get done. You've done a bit of thinking at this stage, so you better prepare. In a general sense, you're going to write down all of the things that you need to get done, possibly even in steps. Write them down. And don't forget your deductions from the questions of so what. Go over them. Think about something you may have missed out. Or maybe cross some out. Or maybe even combine some of those actions into one step. Write down this new list of things that you need to do. Fourth step. We're going to look at Sequencing all those things, those actions that you said you need to, to get things done on time. Put them in a rough sequence. It doesn't have to be within a start and a finish date at this time. Just what comes before what. How do you sequence? Draw a circle, a square, write down the activity, draw an arrow to the next one. Think about all the activities that can start at the same time. Write them down on the left hand side of a piece of paper and work your way across. Don't worry too much, as I said, about the first and the last dates. We'll come back to that when you've got the sequence correct.
Fifth step, this is where we start to think about the finish and the start dates, or the start and the finish dates. Bit to read here. If you need to, grab a piece of paper before you start this. You'll see pretty quickly here <clears throat> whether you can get what you need to get done within the time frame available. For instance, it might be really obvious, as we've said, that the first action is going to take you more than six months. So how will you get the, the following actions done? If it doesn't, then progress through. Have a think about overlapping activities. Have a think about combining some. Maybe breaking them down. So you're further modifying your list of actions to get it done and get it done on time. Let's have a look at how you would do this. Draw your line. You put your beginning date and your end date and break it up. Put all your actions in, in the sequence, roughly with the time that you think it will take. Have a look at the logic. Do you think it will work within that time? It could be that one of your people says that one of those actions is going to take longer than what you have estimated in your initial chart of getting it done. So what you might do is increase that. As a consequence, you might have to decrease the time for a following action or maybe a previous action to fit it in. We're on to the sixth point. <clears throat> Most important. After you've done your thinking, you've drawn yourself a picture. Now, you can start to use those tools that are available to you, like Microsoft Outlook, the diary, Microsoft Project perhaps. Whatever you do, if there are others involved in getting it done, make sure that whatever you produce is able to be communicated. Seventh point. At last, you're finished. Show people your plan. Remember, you produced it in a way which is easy to communicate. And perhaps adjust your plan once again following your final consultation. Not much else you have to do now. It's all done, diarised. You look at your diary each day or maybe a couple of times a day. You look at your software program. It's almost a mindless approach, isn't it? Like walking. But there is one other thing that you need to be aware of. And now, almost finished, there is an eighth step. Aha! You lose track of where you are. Everything I've been told before mustn't be right. So, what you need to do is think about how you're going to make sure that you don't lose time. So into your plan, you put something that enables you, mindlessly, to review where you're up to at any point in time. 
And in that review, you'll find out whether you will get it done on time or not. And that will result in you modifying your plan, perhaps. Again, that's important. If there are others involved, make sure they know about the new plan and what their role in completing the project on time is. Go back then to Automatic Pilot. There is a ninth step if you want to make this a habit. If you want to make it so that you become a person who gets things done and gets them done on time. You've got to remember that each step is as important as the other. Even if it only takes you a couple of minutes to do each step, follow the steps through. If you do this all the time, you make it a habit. Once it becomes a habit, the whole thing becomes almost unconscious, like walking in the park, and you get it done on time. See you later.